What's up guys? As promised, the first installment of the studs and duds segment throughout the MLB. And this one will be just for like the start of the season because I came up with the idea and we were already a week and a half into the season. So I'm going to go um, just through the start of the season and from now on it'll be the week that was. Um, so it could be a player, a team, an umpire, a fan. It doesn't matter. I'll try to be as creative as possible with these and just have fun with it. And you can let me know in the comments or whatever who you think you're your, who's your studs and duds to start the season. Um, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Helps out a lot. Thanks, guys. And here we go. The three studs uh, to start the season. And did I think I was going to say this team ever? No, probably not. The Oakland A's. Um, and it's just really warm and fuzzy that they have some positives. They've won three straight series since for the first time since May 2021. Paul Blackburn is shelving to start the year, setting an Oakland A record for 19, 19 and a third scoreless to start the season. You got Mason Miller throwing absolute uh, fire out of the closer role, closer role 103, 104. You've got Shea Langoliers having a three homer game in one of their wins against the world champion Texas Rangers. By the way, that was one of their series wins. In their three straight series wins, you got Lawrence Butler uh, having his first walk off. You got the Carey family continuing their amazing broadcasting lineage with Chris Carey calling his first game and it ended up being that Lawrence uh, Butler walk off against the Nationals. So a lot of, I know it probably won't last, um, but a lot of positives for Oakland that none of their stuff has been positive. So it kind of gives me the warm and fuzzies that there is because Mark Kotze is a great guy and, and he deserves all the credit in the world. Um, and it's just really fun for them right now. So hopefully they can continue it and just keep getting positives out of a kind of crappy situation. We'll put it that way. So that's why they're one of the studs to start the year. Um, and, uh, the second stud, Marcelo Zuna for the, for the Braves, 373, seven homers, 21 RBIs. Um, and three absolutely game-changing clutch homers that, and I don't think any of us predicted as Braves fans that Marcelo Zuna would be like the key cog in the offense in April uh, with everything that's kind of gone, gone wrong for the Braves injuries, pitching, um, and slow starts. It's kind of insane, and the fact that he was probably... Um, a bad game, a bad series in Miami last year um, from not being on the Braves. And we tried to trade him twice um, for obviously Garcia. The Marlins said no. And then we tried to trade him for Patrick Corbin. The Nationals said no. So I guess it's the moves you don't make. But Marcel is currently on a 13-game hitting streak as well. It's... Uh, it's um, one of the most uh, stark turnarounds uh, career-wise that I've ever seen. Um, and I don't know where the Braves would be without him. So that's why I had to put the Big Bear as a stud. And the last stud is the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, they just got a lot of stuff going for them right now. 11-5. Um, Mr. Pittsburgh Pirate, um, Andrew McCutcheon bashing his 300th homer, um, the clutch pitching they're getting from their youngsters, uh, that Jones kid is absolutely disgusting, um, opened up some eyes already, I believe it's, uh, Garrett, jo Garrett Jones, maybe, 
I don't want to get that wrong, but um, uh, and then Mitch Keller signing the five year, seventy five million dollar contract and living up to it so far. Reynolds doing the same, uh, signing a long term deal in Pittsburgh. Um, it just feels really good. Jackson Winsky is one of the ultimate random random athletes, pest type of guys. And I think they have more organizational depth um, pitching and position player wise to to uh, sustain this good start. Um, hopefully O'Neill Cruz is, is phenomenal. Um, the Cruz missile and allowing him to play short is a really good organizational move. Paul Skeens is on his way. I mean, if you're a Pittsburgh Pirate fan, things are really looking up. And having the veterans that you do with Andrew McCutcheon and Rowdy Telez and things of that nature is really fun for teams like the Pirates um, and Detroit and all those in Kansas City. Those um, teams that haven't been relevant to be relevant early on, but my nod for the stud of the week goes to the Pittsburgh Pirates. And then we flip the switch to the duds. Obviously, um, this isn't positive, but the Miami Marlins are just an absolute joke, and I don't know how the, their fans are their fans. Because, A, they voided the third-year option for manager Skip Schumacher um, a year after getting them to the playoffs. Unexpectedly, they've uh, been ravaged by injuries. Pitching, a lot of teams have, but they've been hit with the injury bug on... Um, the most it feels like with Sandy Alcantara and Yuri Perez, <coughs> Yuri Perez dealing with Tommy John. And then um, the situation with Kim Ang. I know she played some part in it, but she was getting you guys on a positive trajectory. And now, <coughs> and now it's just absolutely gross. And then optioning Max Meyer today. Their best pitcher, um, bar none this year, and just optioning him because they might be trying to get an extra year, but it makes no sense. And they made zero free agent moves until what late March, and it was Tim Anderson, and that's pretty much it. Um, I've never seen a team that made the playoffs the previous year and the ownership and the front office not give a give a crap about them at all. It feels gross and it feels terrible um, and I feel bad. Um, but they were pesky for us this weekend and they're going to be professional but it's just going to be a rough year for Miami. <coughs> Miami. Um, the second Dud is Angel Hernandez, and he probably could be on this list every single week. Um, but I honestly think that, and I put this out on Twitter, that he should be strictly to the bases. Because at least when he messes up there, you can challenge it. But the fact, the, the matter is that he's made bad umpiring cool. And I think he, he is kind of contributed to the league-wide ugliness of umpiring and I understand it's it it's a thankless job it's terrible and you're not going to get every single call right but some of these egregious misses are ridiculous and Angel Hernandez um being a part of it constantly and just being the the poster child for bad umpiring and making it okay because there's nothing we can do about it. That's not fair and something has to change. And the last dud is Julio Rodriguez and the Seattle Mariners. One, uh, Julio Rodriguez has just gotten off to a terrible start. And there's, 
there's some things to a terrible start. That happens. Bad months happen. But the gaffe that he had yesterday, being a pinch runner, the the potential tying run on first base, and you get picked off and you have a 156 average, um, no homers, five RBIs, and two stolen bases to start the year, that's no bueno. And um, he's supposed to be the, the face of your franchise, and he is, but... This Seattle's just gotten off to a terrible start. Luis Castillo, 0 and 4 with over 6 ERA, and I don't think they they've done enough um, to help offensively because their pitching staff is usually the best in the league or one of the best in the league. And Logan Gilbert is still that. Kirby's gotten off to a ugly type of start, but they don't they don't ever have. Um, Guys, to help out Julio Rodriguez to take the pressure off, and you got rid of Suarez um, to the Diamondbacks, and he's had a really good start for them. Teoscar Hernandez. I know they had a lot of strikeouts in there, but there was a lot of extra base hit and um, extra base hit and homer possible power, and it feels like uh, they're scratching and clawing for every run, and that puts way too much pressure on your your uh starting staff to be absolutely perfect and i think that is why they're dud to me to start the year because i just don't think they did enough to supplement um supplement their team and they're they're putting themselves behind the eight ball and all, and things of that nature but uh obviously it's six and ten is not a it's not a death sentence in April, but they really got to start figuring things out and start putting the ball in play more. And uh, Julio Rodriguez definitely has to get going, but they've always struggled with the average and the strikeouts, and I don't know where that's going to be fixed, and that's why I worry completely about the Seattle Mariners and your best player getting picked off in the biggest spot in the game is not a good look. So mentally... Um, the Mariners probably need a check of some sort, but those are my three studs and duds for the start of the season. As always, go Braves, champions forever. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, helps out a lot. Thanks, guys.